I'm going to bring two holiday traditions together with my chocolate spice gingerbread house cake, a decadent chocolate cake and a gingerbread house all in the same dessert. I wanna start with this chocolate cake and I'm not starting with the actual cake, but I'm making the frosting first and it's actually a ganache. I have already weighed out 14 ounces of dark chocolate. I'm first heating two cups of cream. As soon as you see it start to bubble, then you know you're good. And I pour the hot cream over the chocolate. And essentially, I'm letting the cream do all the work here. I just smooth it out, make sure the chocolate is fully melted, which by the time it's blended and smooth, it will be. Now it's time for me to add three quarters of a cup of sour cream. It sounds funny to say it lightens it up, but it does lighten it up in consistency. And then whisk this in. The last addition to the ganache, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then set it aside to cool. Now it's time to make this decadently rich chocolate cake. So I'll sift my dry ingredients together, starting with two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. And I need two cups of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Now, I have designed my own signature holiday spice blend. To start it off, I have two tablespoons of ground cinnamon and two tablespoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of ground allspice and ground cloves, a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and then the real signature comes in with my last two spices, ground cardamom and a teaspoon of ground aniseed. And now with this batch, I'm pretty much set for the holiday season. So for my chocolate cake recipe, two teaspoons of this blend. I'll finish sifting this together. And I'll add one and a half cups of unsalted butter to the mixing bowl. Now I'm ready to combine all of my wet ingredients. So I have a cup and a half of sour cream here and I'm going to break in three whole eggs. Two teaspoons of vanilla, and then you give this a quick whisk. And then add this all at once to my batter base here. Let it mix to combine for just about 30 seconds to a minute to build in some structure. To ultimately get my house shape, I need two eight inch square pans and a loaf pan that's eight and a half by four and a half inches. And just spread it until it's level. All right, these are all set for the oven. I've preheated it to 350, and it only takes about 35 minutes. Look at all of this chocolate cake. So first thing I'm going to do is spread a little of the ganache on one of the eight inch layers. Then I place the second square cake right on top. What I want to do though is actually cut this in half. So this is the base, the main floor of the house. Put some of the ganache on now and I'll top it with the second story. And now it's time for the roof. So what I'll do is I'll trim down to the outside edge here and drop this on top. There we go. And now I'll frost the sides, both ends, and the roof with the ganache, bringing the ganache up to a peak in the center. So now that I have a chocolate cake that's in the shape of a house, I need to make the gingerbread. What I have is three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter, and I'll add to that three quarters of a cup of dark brown sugar. I'll give that a little beat. And now I add half a cup of fancy molasses, the signature addition to a gingerbread cookie recipe. Once you have that mixed in, it's time to add a tablespoon of grated fresh ginger. Three cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon each of baking powder, 
baking soda, and salt. Let's not forget about that signature spice blend, two tablespoons. I'll just mix this on low speed until it comes together. I'll shape the dough into two discs. You need this to chill before you roll it, so you want to give it about two hours. It is a good idea if you plan on making your gingerbread house to cover the cake to check your measurements of the side walls, the end walls, and your roof. That way you can cut out templates that you know will fit on top. So I have my main walls that are four by eight, my roof, and my end walls with a nice little detail there. Here we go, I've got my first piece of dough rolled to about a quarter inch thick. I'm gonna take care of my large pieces first, my side walls. And just trim following your template. those on a baking tray. Now it's time for my two side pieces. These are all set for the oven, which I have at 325, and I give them 15 to 18 minutes. The best thing about baking off gingerbread is decorating it. So now I'm putting the finishing details onto my gingerbread house that I'll then stack on top of that chilled chocolate cake. To decorate and assemble the gingerbread house, I use royal icing. It's really easy to whip up. Just beat one and a half tablespoons of meringue powder with three tablespoons of warm water and two cups of icing sugar. Use the paddle attachment and just let it go until it's nice and fluffy. Then it's ready to use. So what I'm doing, I'm starting out with my roof tiles. I'm making a beautiful white chocolate roof to top this cake. So these are just little white chocolate wafers and I glue the royal icing on, and you sort of stagger them a little bit and overlap them. There we go. Now that my two roof pieces are done, I can let those dry. That gives me a chance to work on my sides. I'll start with the end wall pieces. I think I should put a front door on one. Of course, you need a doorknob. About a window up top. Absolutely beautiful. It is something special. And you want to give them a minimum of two hours to dry. Now these have had their time to set, so that means I get to build the gingerbread house. First, I'm going to start with the long walls. And the joy is, it's the ganache that holds the gingerbread in place. Like so, put on the other side. Okay, so now for the roof. I think my biggest tip here is just take your time. There we go. On goes the front door. And I'll use a little royal icing to make sure everything is secured in place. And what does a festive gingerbread house need but a little snow? I love this. You've got a gorgeous gingerbread house, but on top of that, you've got dessert for 16 to 20 people. How absolutely amazing. Thank you for watching this recipe from the Anna Olson archives. I do hope I've inspired you to use the recipe that's below in the description. Please let us know about your cooking and baking adventures in the comments below. And of course, you wanna like this video. And remember, there's more great recipes coming your way.